The months-long impeachment drama has felt to many of us like a movie we knew the ending to all along. But this afternoon, there was a plot twist, courtesy of Senator Mitt Romney. The grave question the Constitution tasks senators to answer is whether the president committed an act so extreme and egregious that it rises to the level of a high crime and misdemeanor. Yes, he did. Accordingly, the president is guilty of an appalling abuse of public trust. Other than Romney's vote to convict on one count, the full Senate voted along straight party lines a few hours ago to acquit Donald Trump on both charges of abuse of power and obstruction of Congress. And although last night's State of the Union did not feature the word impeachment once, the political divide was on stark display when Trump apparently refused to shake Nancy Pelosi's hand, when Jerry Nadler was shown sitting in a seat flipping through a pocket-sized copy of the Constitution, and, of course, when Pelosi ripped up her copy of the president's speech right over his shoulder. Why did you get up this thing on that? Because it was a manifesto of mistruths. I think she had the same reaction many of us have. He does never miss an opportunity to divide the country, and, and that's what he did last night. As far as I'm concerned, the shredder wasn't available, and so she did what she needed to do. It was disgraceful. It was disgusting. You can tear up the speech, but you can't tear up the accomplishments, and that's what this race is going to be about in 2020. And the 2020 rate was, race was certainly on the president's mind, with the speech at first feeling more like a campaign rally than a formal address to the nation. And then there were the reality TV moments, a series of choreographed surprises for guests in the audience, including a private school scholarship for a young girl, a soldier returning from his fourth tour in Afghanistan to surprise his family, and a medal of freedom for one of the most divisive men ever to take to the airwaves, Rush Limbaugh, who just announced he has late-stage lung cancer. But peppered throughout were the president's shots at his Democratic opponents and their ideals. The United States of America should be a sanctuary for law-abiding Americans, not criminal aliens. If we hadn't reversed the failed economic policies of the previous administration, the world would not now be witnessing this great economic success. Socialism destroys nations, but always remember freedom unifies the soul. Division on parade for 78 minutes last night. So is there a way back or is this just America's new reality? Joining me for Jennifer Nassour, former chair of the Massachusetts Republican Party. She's now the founder and president of Conservative Women for a Better Future. Good to see you, Jennifer. See you. Heather Cox Richardson is a presidential historian from Boston College. Good to see you, too. See you. Before we get to this sick partisanship. Let's visit this one rare moment of bipartisanship. Here's a little more from Mitt Romney today. In the last several weeks, I've received numerous calls and texts. Many demanded in their words that I stand with the team. I can assure you that that thought has been very much on my mind. You see, I support a great deal of what the president has done. I voted with him 80 percent of the time. But my promise before God to apply impartial justice required that I put my personal feelings and political biases aside. With my vote, I will tell my children and their children that I did my duty to the best of my ability, believing that my country expected it of me. Jennifer, you were a Republican official. What happens to him? He votes for witnesses. He's disinvited from CPAC. After his speech today, Don Jr. said he should be expelled from the Republican Party. What happens to Romney? Nothing. They can't get In rid Republican of him. ranks? I mean, you know, what are they going to do? He's the elected senator from Utah. He's, he still has four years left to his term. Nothing is going to happen to him. I'm very impressed by what he did. And I think that his explanation was outstanding, that he is a man of God. He is a man of faith. And that over everything else, his oath in front of God means more than the party does. Now, this is a pretty accomplished guy. He was governor of the state. He's a senator from Utah. He was almost president of the United States. My analysis, I'm not the historian, you are, his career is going to be defined by this moment. Am I, I wrong? That, no, no, I think that's exactly right. And there's something interesting about that that I think people are not quite looking at yet. And that is that, yes, he's talking about his faith, but one of the things that's really pushing the, the Mormon church right now and that's pushing Romney is, uh, and I'm probably going to butcher the name of this, but it's Mormon and women for ethical government, which has come out and tried to break Mormons away from Trump since even before the Christianity Today article. And they're actually being quite powerful among 
women. And Romney knows that he's responding to that as well as simply to what people are watching on the, the, the regular news. Do you buy uh, Jennifer's notion that he is not totally, I, my attitude is he's totally ostracized in whatever way he can be from the Republican Party. Oh, yes, I think he's absolutely ostracized. And that's something important that happened last night, I think, is the, the reality that this is not the Republican Party anymore. It's the Trump Party. Mm. And the Republican Party used to include a wide range of people with a wide range of different ideas, and you could have dissent with it, and that's how it changed. That's all gone. You're for Trump or you're not part of the party. And that's, that, to me, was the other big switch of last night. Let's talk about that yawning divide for a few minutes, if we can, Jen, uh, Jennifer. I, I can't remember a ceremonial event that was as partisan as that. How locked in is this? It seems to me, I mean, 94% of Republicans say they support Donald uh, Trump. Obviously, every single Republican in the Senate, other than uh, Mitt Romney, every single Republican in the House of Representatives, Representatives, is this permanent? Well, nothing is permanent. Is this a state that's going to be with us? This partisan divide for a long period of time? Well, I agree. Right now, we the Republicans do not have a party. The Republicans, like me, do not have a party. It is the party of Trump, and it is the "you do what I say, you fall in line," which is why I don't think that Mitt's career is doomed. Because I think that Mitt is on. There are some of us that are holding the course as Republicans in the Republican Party, and knowing that one. Once Donald Trump, whether it's this year or four and a half years from now, is gone, someone needs to be standing there holding up the ship for the Republican Party. Do you think this all disappears when Donald Trump disappears? Absolutely. You don't think this is marbled into no. the landscape? No. He'll go away, and all of his little minions will also go away, and then there have to be people like the governor, like Romney, who are standing up there and saying, this is the Republican Party that we originally signed on for. Do you buy the notion that it is purely in the time of Trump that Trumpism is like it is? I would put it slightly differently, but yes. I think that this moment looks a great deal, and I'm sorry to sound all historical here, but sounds a great <laughs> deal like the Kansas-Nebraska Act when that got forced through Congress in 1854. And what happened is the Democrats, at that time the positions were sort of reversed, the Democrats signed on because they had such extraordinary pressure from the president and from the leaders of the party. And they gritted their teeth, and they signed on, and they got decimated. And that's when you got the rise of the modern day Republican Party. And I think that's what we'll see here is the Republican Party is going to be decimated. Absolutely. And these people will hive off and make their own third party as they have always been in in the past, or they're going to start p p participating in politics. And not necessarily, I hate to say the Republican Party, because lots of people now say, oh, no, it's dead, it's dead, it's dead. The ideology of the Republican Party is going to rise again under either the name Republican or something else, because it has been part of the American DNA since 1850. So you said you hated to be historical, but stay historical for a second. <laughs> That's why Has they pay me the big bucks. <laughs> been a president in our lifetimes who is, in a calculated way, deciding that dividing is the road to victory, and well, Nixon, it was the road to victory. Nixon, in, eight, in eight, uh, 1970, this is very deliberately a, a policy of Pat Buchanan and Spiro Agnew to go ahead and try and drum up votes by saying, you're with us, you're not with those people. So and purely solidified it comes, base. It comes from Nixon and Lee Atwater and all those people, yes, but obviously he's got it on steroids. My sense was that it, the goal of dividing last night on the president, which has stood him in pretty good stead electorally, uh, was elevated to an art form when Rush Limbaugh was honored. I mentioned it a minute ago. Here's just a taste of what happened last night. I am proud to announce tonight that you will be receiving our country's highest civilian honor, the Presidential Medal of Freedom. You know, this is a guy, by the way, for those I'm sure you all know, who said once the NAACP should have riot rehearsal. They should get a liquor store and practice robberies. Barack Obama was a Chicago street thug. Here's my analysis of what uh, the president was hoping for last night, sort of brilliantly strategically. There, his hope was that when he recognized Rush Limbaugh and his wife put that medal around his throat, that the Democrats would boo a guy with stage four lung cancer. Is that ridiculous? I don't think so. No, I don't think so. I mean, I think that that would prove his point, saying, look how mean and nasty and terrible everything else that he says about the Democrats. I think that's exactly what he was looking for. Do you for. feel you've totally lost the party? I mean, you were the chair of the Republican Party. I know you can say Massachusetts is different. By the way, not all of Massachusetts Republicans are different. A lot of them love this guy. Correct. Do you feel like you're a person without a home? 
Well, no, because my leader is Charlie Baker, and so thank God we have him because he's the he is the model of normalcy. <laughs> and six percent of fellow Republicans, you've lost the other ninety-four for the time. Is impeachment, despite the fact that obviously it didn't prevail, is impeachment because of the division that we're living through? Is impeachment going to become? A regular or no. more regular tool? No, and, and that was always a red herring. You know, after the impeachment of Clinton, you know, the, the Barack Obama and George W. Bush did not get impeached. I mean, it's not going to be a tool that way. But what's important about impeachment was that it really highlighted the fact that the Democratic Party right now is operating in a reality-based world. And the Republican Party is not even, I'm sorry, I'm not going to call the Republican Party any longer. The Trump Party is no longer even trying to operate in the real world. They are constructing a narrative for a base. And it's a narrative that is based on hating other people and on arguing that this small guy can take on a Goliath. And you saw that in the State of the Union so dramatically last night. It was a reality TV show. It was living, not reality. When you say Democrats are living in a real world, virtually every of them, they're rushing to be the first one in the line to say, we're going to unify all of America. Not unlike a guy said there are no red states, there are no blue states, they're not black Americans and Asian Americans, we're all just Americans. That was obviously Barack Obama, his keynote address at the Kerry Convention in 2004. Are they deluding themselves? No. No, I think Americans are tired of the divisiveness and they're tired of the false reality. Trump has the, his highest approval rating in his whole presidency. Well, that's not a surprise after the State of the Union and after. No, it's before happened. the State of the Union. Um, it's still it's still in the 40s. I mean, 49, this is not, 49 to 50, highest he's had in his whole I, time in office. I'm not going to lose sleep over that yet. I think Americans want a return, not necessarily to de to the Democrats, but to a reality-based world. And that reality-based world has plenty of room in it for Republicans and Democrats and Greens or whomever, but they don't any longer want to have a world that is based in hatred and in fiction, which is what we've got right the now. majority of the American people want unity or no? Or they want uh, Trump no. crushed and Trump's people want the Democrats crushed. So I, I unfortunately I disagree because what I see is that the Democrats are no better than the Republicans right now. I think that watching all the female members of Congress sit there in their white and not even get up when he was talking about education, it took them a while. When he was talking about planting trees all over, they weren't getting up. When he was talking about infrastructure, it was almost like they were waiting for Pelosi who is their Trump, their version of Trump, to get up to give them their How do they that, get up when okay. he's talking about protecting people with pre-existing no. conditions at the same no. time that he's got a brief saying that the Affordable Care Act, which protects people with pre-existing conditions, They don't need to get up at every time, but what I'm saying is when there were bipartisan messages, they weren't getting up. And I will say, if I walked into a room of Democrats, I would be shunned just because I'm a female and I'm a Republican, and I am not a female and a Democrat. And so the Democratic Party is doing the same exact thing that the Republican or the Trump party is doing with the same hatred coming at Republicans regardless of who you are the it is the why are you still a Republican and so it's our way or the highway so on both ends right now they are both terrible I'm really <laughs> sad we have to end on that Heather next time we'll continue pleasure to nice you. to see you thanks so much Jennifer. Thank you. appreciate your time